Today I'm going to make the chemical sodium nitropresside, which is primarily used as a medication under the brand name Nitropress. Sodium nitropresside works by rapidly lowering blood pressure in the case of a hypertensive crisis or during surgery to reduce bleeding. As a medication, sodium nitropresside is administered directly into the bloodstream where it's broken down into cyanide and nitric oxide, which is a powerful vasodilator. One major benefit of sodium nitroprusside as a medication is that its effects stop immediately once it's no longer being administered. And another big benefit is that it tends to more selectively relax arteries, unlike other nitrate medications, which exhibit more selectivity for veins. Anyway, to make sodium nitroprusside, I begin by dissolving 20 grams of potassium ferrocyanide in 30 milliliters of water. This was taking a while to dissolve, so I went ahead and placed the beaker in a hot water bath and heated it to 90 degrees Celsius with constant stirring until all the ferrocyanide had dissolved and the solution was a clear yellow color. Next, I slowly added 34 milliliters of 67% nitric acid using an addition funnel. This immediately caused the solution to turn green, which turned darker over time, and by the time all of the nitric acid had been added, the solution was a very dark indiscernible color. Now at this point, I simply heated the mixture in a hot water bath at around 90 degrees Celsius for about 90 minutes. During this step of the reaction, one molecule of potassium ferrocyanide reacts with six molecules of nitric acid to form hydrogen nitrocyl cyanoferrate along with potassium nitrate, ammonium nitrate, and carbon dioxide. This reaction is fairly messy and results in the formation of various side products, and I'm honestly not sure what specific side products are formed here, but the dark coloration and flashes of blue leads me to believe that some ferric ions were liberated here which reacted with excess ferrocyanide to form Prussian blue or some derivative thereof. Also, the distinct almond smell indicates some hydrogen cyanide or cyanogen was created during the process which I would be very wary of if attempting this synthesis. If you are not aware, cyanide is extremely toxic. Anyway, the progress of this reaction can be tracked by reacting a small amount of the reaction mixture with some iron-3 solution. And the reason for this is that if there's any ferrocyanide that hasn't yet reacted to the nitrocyl cyanoferrate product, it should react with the iron-3 ions to form the bright blue complex known as Prussian blue. I went ahead and set up multiple test tubes figuring the reaction had a while longer to go, but the very first addition resulted in no blue precipitation, so I figured the reaction was already close to complete at this point. To that end, I go ahead and remove my reaction mixture from the heat and allow it to rest overnight in order to crystallize out as much potassium nitrate as possible. When I came back the next day, I passed this all through vacuum filtration to remove the potassium nitrate crystals which were stained nearly black by the reaction mixture. I then transferred my filtrate to a beaker and slowly neutralized it with a saturated solution of sodium carbonate. This reaction will result in the formation of my sodium nitroprusside along with carbon dioxide gas. Sodium nitrate is also formed by reacting with excess nitric acid, and I'm sure there's a few other side reactions going on here with my unknown byproducts. Regardless, I go ahead and keep adding sodium carbonate until the solution stops bubbling, which indicates that this step is complete. At this point, I have synthesized sodium nitroprusside, which means this solution should be very bright red, and clearly it is not. To try and clean this up, I passed the solution through a coffee filter to try and remove the darkly colored byproducts that had formed, and this did not work at all. I then moved on to plan B and left this out overnight in the hopes that whatever this extremely dark solid was would settle to the bottom. And when I came back the next day, I was very happy to see that much of the solid did indeed settle to the bottom, so I went ahead and decanted off my red sodium nitroprusside before adding a bit of water to the crap left behind in the flask to extract what little more I could. The sodium nitroprusside solution was then boiled down to around a fifth of this initial volume, and then I added an arbitrary amount of absolute ethanol to try and precipitate any remaining potassium or sodium nitrate. This was allowed to cool down to 0 degrees Celsius and then vacuum filtered, and the filtrate was then subsequently boiled down again to crystallize the sodium nitroprusside. As you can see here, by the way, I was indeed able to extract some more sodium nitroprusside from the super crude stuff from earlier, but I didn't think it was worth purifying, so I just decanted it off and left it as an impure solution. 
Anyway, once most of the liquid had been boiled off, pure crystals of sodium nitroprusside form, which I collect by another vacuum filtration. They look fairly similar to potassium ferrocyanide, which I've made before on this channel, but definitely more distinctly red, and one of the more beautiful chemicals I've made. Once this spent some time desiccating, I weighed it and got a final mass of 8.75 grams, which represents a 61.6% yield. However, given how much byproduct junk I generated, and given I also have that solution of nitroprusside from earlier, this yield seems a little bit too high to me, and it likely contains a bit of sodium nitrate that could be removed by another recrystallization. I'm not the biggest recrystallization fan on Earth, so um, I did not do one. Anyway, one more use of sodium nitroprusside I didn't mention earlier is that it can be used to detect the presence of sulfide ions or ketones. In both cases, it turns purple, and for my first demo, I simply dissolved some of the sodium sulfide I made a few months ago in some distilled water. I then dissolved an arbitrary amount of the sodium nitroprusside in distilled water, and when it was completely dissolved, I added a single drop to the sulfide solution. This immediately resulted in the color dramatically turning such a dark purple that it was really hard to tell it was even purple, and I didn't really like this demo. To get a better visual, I did this again, but this time I dissolved 0.1 grams of the sodium sulfite in 500 milliliters of water, instead of dissolving 2 grams in 100 milliliters. Because I used so little sulfide this time, the solution stayed clear, and the purple color was much nicer this time. And I would have done this from the start, but I wasn't really aware that sodium nitroprusside was so sensitive to sulfide, and it's kind of interesting that it is. To demonstrate the ketone test, I simply added a few milliliters of the nitroprusside solution to some acetone. And I wasn't really sure if this would work, but I figured acetone is a ketone, so why not? This reaction wasn't nearly as dramatic as the sulfide test, but after a minute or so it did become a faint purple, which became slowly darker over time. Anyway, this was a lot of fun, but it's all I've got for today, and as always, I hope you found this interesting, and big shout out to my incredible patrons for their very generous contributions. Your support is incredibly vital and very, very appreciated. And to everyone else, if you would like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.